bother to. Um, I believe he will need to pick up uh, some more mana sooner. Getting the treads for tank ability against this early burst lineup, and he will be um, well on the way to his BKB soon enough, I believe. Or perhaps blink first. It, I mean, it's up to him. A getting the treads again for more tank ability. Uh, able to switch them back and forth in order to use the spells more efficiently. Uh, in general, Navi seem to be tanking up uh, quite a lot. They, they, I believe they see they're behind. Uh, Phantom Assassin will go to bl uh, straight Battle Fury, allowing him to farm very fast. She'll pick up, I presume, the Quelling Blade as soon as she finishes it in order to um, uh, accelerate her farm rate, by, farm rate by quite a lot. Uh, although picking up this late, the Battle Fury is a detriment to Navi, especially when Hal already has his Radiance and uh, has another big item on the way. Dyer's uh, middle tower is under attack. As I say that, no, I believe he just finished shreds. <laughs> Whatever. But, um, they will be taking one out here when I'm with this. I'll have a lot of them to farm deep into the enemy territory, if so needs to be, if they ward properly, etc. And it'll be tough for Narvi to come back. Dyer's In fact, now they may even go for Roshan. Um, as, uh, or rather they might just go straight to the tier 2 top. Uh, rotating around, they'll run into a Nink Puppies and Eidolons, but nothing is done then. Rubik setting up the gold for a four staff. Awoke has got the smoke. A bit more gold in the bank for him. Shan Shan, uh, nothing at the moment. Interesting what the Queen of Pain is going for. Looks like Aglim is very nice. He'll be able to um, spam the alternate, which will then have a 45 second cooldown on the Sonic Wave and it will do more damage, I believe. Yes, it does indeed. Um, so, very good by Mu. It will allow him to push very effectively and counter push very effectively just by using the ultimate once. Double and then um, it allowed him to engage in multiple team fights and multiple pickoffs. Uh, and will be able to go for the ultimate for solo pickoffs if he needs Radiant's to. Be. Middle tower and we see Narby doing the rush and This will be a big fight for Tom Fu if they get to sleep, which they do. It looks like Shang Tsung's going to drop the wards in, which will be coming out to him in a second. How's going to cancel it? A going to go in. As we see Puppy, the walls drop, Puppy goes a massive black hole, every losing tons of HP, Moon blinks in, but he'll get caught out, Light of Heaven, walking around with the shell, tons and tons of damage, the Shrek doing all the work there with his, not even his ult level, just the Edict, Puppy, massive black hole, massive win for Navi there, Light of Heaven dropping a nice vacuum, wall replica combo, very good teamwork between the two, Dendi dropping his ult as well on the two nukes, and, 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 and her both will pick up the um, Aegis. Uh, last turn of play here. A post now is invincible for a while. I say with a pinch of salt due to the blink, the evasion, and the Aegis. He'll be able to farm very comfortably. Team wipe the Tongfu. Navi now winning 9 to 4. The gold chart should reflect this. As you see, Radiant Leaf won a massive spike downwards. I expect it to continue as Navi um, cement their advantage. Experience graph. Radiant structures massive um, drop in the dyer's favour. Uh, as we see, it was equal up until slightly before. Um, 10,000 EXP difference and a huge 2000, uh, 4,000 gold difference in a matter of uh, a minute or so. Less than a minute, bottom tower is under so a big, big win for Na'Vi there, getting the rush down and all the kills. Puppy will go straight for his blink dagger. AA was going for his BKB now, might even get drums along the way. Like Helen has finished his pipe and Havos has 400 gold in the bank. There's nothing on the career at the moment, although I expect some sort of big damage item or perhaps a bit more tank ability from him. As we look at the um, last six and nine, Naga still leading just by 10, but um, if we look at uh, net worth, Havos is ultimately winning. Dyer's Narby, their supports beating the reigning supports as well. Um, Mu, another big farmer for Tom Fu that Narby will have to watch out in the later stages. However, um, as we see by all these illusions confusing me on the mini map. Uh, big farm from Narvi here. Um, uh, they will. Narvi might struggle against the burst damage as Queen of Pink gets her off, but uh, at the moment they're doing fine and they are holding into this game, able to prevent, able to survive the initial onslaught by Tong Fu, and will now begin to get some big game changing items and do what they love to do, which is roam gank into push, or rather just push into gank. Xbox, uh, Havos having the biggest farm song. Vlad's pick on Havos. Very interesting choice. Um, uh, presumably for himself and for the push and the counter push, of course. And for the tank ability, the Basilius working nicely into this. Vlad's another Radiant's one of the better cost effect items in the game Radiant's compared to uh, things like Mech. Back in with things like um, 
Christmas or whatever. Uh, but yes, ranks very close with Mecha in terms of team work. As you see, Tom threw back away from this. How going back to farm in mid lane? Uh, 800 gold in his bank. I'm presuming lost quite a lot from the earlier engagement. Nothing on the career, so his farm has been definitely halted. Well, well, he got the radiance at good five minutes ago now, and has not done anything since at all with his um, advantage. Meanwhile, Havos picked attack. up the battery and the blast, and is well on the way to the second um, or third rather um, later game item. So as we see, Na'Vi have an amazing rush and potential if they land all their stuff, with the die advantage included, and with a hero like Phantom Assassin who will need the survivability and the tank ability given by Edison and Cheese. Um, this is very, very well um, sussed out by Na'Vi and Tongfu, even with the sleep and the big AoE from the Queen of Pain and perhaps a Rubik, it, it just was far too much and overwhelming completely. Rubik not having spell enough to have in a stolen bank. As we even smoked up top, maybe even no, never mind. Yes, so smoked up top, nothing will be accomplished. Chen being forced to adopt a um, alpha wolf, which is not what you would ideally want. It having no abilities, it's de decent for the push and decent for your carry, but uh, really not not one of the better creeps, such as a centaur, a sub warrior, or um, troll ward. Looking back at the gold chart, slight, slightly increasing the radiance favour. I guess it's simply the Chinese knowing how to farm a bit about the Navi. How um, climbing his way up in the last set of Nair's charts. Uh, XP, however, still in the Dyer's favour and will continue to edge this way, I believe, soon. Um, as Navi cement their advantage, as as I've said plenty of times in the past. Well, the thing is, we see despite them winning the big Roshan fight, Tong threw a far better um, or more aggressively warded rather. Uh, having the ward up top and being able to roam Na'Vi's jungle it seems and their own very safely wise Na'Vi's um, simply left this sort of area here and cannot go outside that was a pretty terrible drawing but you know what I mean so Havos is picking up the recipe for BKB as I suggested he might have to earlier um, the, there's nothing here that can cancel that and it will allow him to attack the Nalasan during sleep, which if he has the Vlads and the BKB well, it should give him enough tank to um, even go one-on-one -on -one with the Nalasan, perhaps even engaging with her team. Um, the sleep normally being one of the better ways of um, countering BKB due to the fact that everybody slept apart from the guy with the BKB, meaning that you can focus him very easily and do all the damage needs to do to him, who will often be the guy for carry with the BKB, and this means that they'll be um, picked up as we see the illusions in here, I don't think. So, um, but in this case, Havos, since he does so much damage and has the life steal, it might well be that the whole Tongfu has to retreat in the face of him being magic immune with so much of their damage relying on magic. The only thing here being a Nala Siren who can actually hurt him whilst in BKB and, well, she is progressing slowly. Going for Manta, it seems, next. Uh, I doubt it's Scarly, but it looks like a Manta. Um, I mean, decent choice. You'll be able to dodge the silence from, or rather, split from the silence from Puck, as will you be able to um, perhaps get out of Darts' vacuum should you need be. But it's it's a uh, it's a I don't know. Um, perhaps it was what he originally planned for: big damage, or rather, semi-damage item, or semi-damage item. Or it won't. I don't believe it will give enough um, slow ability to survive these uh, spells. I. Presumably he's relying on his teammate Samsung to lock them down, who only has level 1 Shackle and level 2 Hex, as well as the Rubik and Shen to heal, and to try and simply um, use the sleep to stall the team fight or the cat or to somehow s prevent black holes and stuff um, and from hurting him and from affecting him, which means he'll be able to do the damage later, or perhaps he will simply sacrifice himself and let move to do damage. Dyer's bottom tower the BKB attack. will be picked up soon by Hevos, it looks like, just working on the 600 gold for the Ogre Club. And he picked up the TB. So, pretty fa passive um, farming moment from both teams now. Uh, that one big team fight with Rosh and very uncharacteristic in the Navi game and Top 3 game, particularly. Um, having 14 kills in 26 minutes, normally it's about double, uh, well, 2 kills every minute. Uh, nice stacking here by Tonkle. We'll give a lot of these guys um, much needed experience in levels. 
Uh, Awoke King level 11, Shenzhen le level 8, I need it, Kabu level 11. This will really help them um, top tower is uh, under manage to deal with Na'Vi's Supreme Team fight. If we look at the levels quickly, 11, 11, 8, 14, 13, 15 have those leading, uh, but everybody above level on Na'Vi and they all have their big ultimate soon. Uh, let's uh, AA going the standard Dyer's build, the one that um, most Europeans do, which is simply maxing the stun radius um, to apply the big stun damage. Double E for pushing, obviously, in the pulse never for the remainder. Not enough mana to really handle the Lightning Storm, and it's it's sub in damage anyway. A lot of Chinese teams like Lightning Storm, particularly for counter push against European teams, uh, actually, but um, not fitting now this base out here. Although they could use some counter push mid, but with the illusionary orb, um, some of the eidolons, in fact, living the midnight pulse now, and the darts uh, are on shell, you would think they have enough, but well, it seems that Tong Fu is simply too strong in that regard with the Chen. I'm, I'm very surprised Navi still didn't pick up the Enchantress. Um, you know, Puppy plays such good junglers, um, um, and Light Heaven can even take on the Nigma. I'm really interested that they managed to let the Chen go uncontested and the jungle go uncontested, but well, I guess that's the way Navi wants to play, and so be it. Th these, of course, perhaps, as I hit my mic, these perhaps being used as warm up matches for the actual international in a few days' time. Where um, teams will want to know what sort of state they can um, form as Life Heaven decides to arch themselves for no reason. Uh, as he's all magic, I mean, uh, uh, Life Heaven picking up a Blink Dagger, not not finished with Blink Dagger, which means he doesn't need Moti to cast this because he'll just simply blink in uh, for 75 mana, of course, and then vacuum wall into the Enigma Blink. This is a very daring combo, however, if they pull it off, you know, Navi will steamroll these team fights. Um, the sleep being far too slow in order to land this. How, but they will need perfect blink timing and they will have to set it up very, very well indeed in order to um, pull this off. But look forward to seeing some of these in the future. Uh, Phantom Assassin working on her, um, I presume, a damage item now that they've got a BKB and Flads up. Uh, it'll be interesting what sort of items they get. I mean, maybe even Basher or something because um, with her voice, as we see, Silence on Mu and he was. The ult drops and she manages to blink out with a Chen ult. Very impressive play from Mu, although ultimately I felt that. very One very down. close in the cooldown, but Esther tries to blink in and now he's stuck as he blinks up to Dindy. Um It'll be interesting to see what goes in Phantom Assassin. Butterfly not being optimal due to the blur thing, not stacking, the evasion not stacking. Uh crit obviously not optimal due to Coup de Grau already in play. Um a blink, no, you have one of those. And things like Scarly perhaps might be decent. Basically, people on Phantom it's very difficult to go attack speed on Phantom Assassin. Um, Assault Curass is a decent shout in this respect. However, things like Mjolnir. Well, th the things people have started with is that Phantom Assassin people tend to go Satanic. Uh, it gives a bit of tank ability, and um, from what I've seen anyway, it gives the tank ability with the strength gain and gives. Good damage late game and the massive life skill, which is ideal for Coup de Gras. However, since he's going a normal perfect lands in order to help his team as well, this will mean that he has a lot more choice in terms of orbs. Maybe go Mjolnir or something. As you see, he's got the second Aegis of the game. Uncontested completely by Tong Fu, which I guess is what they're forced to do due to the last fight, which they even initiated him with the si Song of Siren. Not going their way. Which um, I believe was due to Na'Vi's place in me. I don't believe Tong Fu made any, any huge mistakes in that team fight, or at least any noticeable ones. As we see Mu going for Dendi, <laughs> nice ooze into teleport. As we see, wow, lovely, lovely phase shift there. And attack. I believe Mu was tricked there and decided not to chase. Um, well done avoiding that. Uh, Dendi recognising that he will die from the ult if, they, um, if he managed to get it and sacrificing his TP timing and also uses mobility to escape. No force stuff picked up, ulls for movement speed and the Dyer's nice ulls blinks as well as the phase blinks. As you see how solid this is top of the instant of Navi Defenders, which of course they should, they all have TB scrolls, and as they all, I mean two of them have TB scrolls, uh, and these two carries going against them. This might be a base race even, although this is not something that Navi can win, I don't think. Darcy has a TP, 
no one else is actually does nothing. If, if Tom Fee managed to pick up a top racks like this, this would be a massive, massive shot to Na'Vi. And I attack. cannot believe that Na'Vi are down to take a tower like this. Light Heaven eventually does, does TP back. I'm not sure if Tom Fee knew the other three didn't have TP scrolls, but if they did, I certainly would have stayed um, and try and make something of this more. I mean, a, a black hole wall vacuum combo is a big, big, oh, big, big combo. But I mean, it's not it's not that impressive unless you have the damage to back it up. And with um, a hero like Mu being top of the Queen of Pain, um, you know, the right click damage isn't all there. Of course, the radiance will burn quite a lot. But the right click damage from Mu won't be there, which means that once they survive the black hole, or perhaps even initiate with their sleep, it's very possible to pick off the two heroes. Five made for Navi. All smoked up, apart from a verse who will continue to farm. Looks like he's going for an MKB for the Demon Edge. Um, perhaps he anticipates a bus plan on Nala Siren, or perhaps he's just doing it for Bance. Um, <laughs> uh, I presume it's MKB by the way, not a um, Divine. Uh, I don't think I need to go that crazy necessarily, but uh, Hervos is doing the right after that. MKB had a big favorite among people. I'm surprised he's not being up attack speed in a way, but I'm sure it's great. Obviously, Kabushin a blink. Good for his mobility and his survivability. Uh, Chen seemed to be finding the best treat, best creeps um, he could wish for. Double Centaur and Troll Ward, and we saw the troll, double Troll Ward earlier. Um, he's having a lovely time. Will A get caught out with a stomp or the net just to stay on the cast time? As we see, Nalga actually mentioned Chase Away Puppy was simply the illusion. Very interesting there. Dendi silences Mu, he, uh, he shouldn't get the kill. He uses the ult. Mu is silenced up in the fog. Will Dendi get there? Uh, doesn't look like it, no. A getting able to farm, he has his DKB. Uh, not tons of mana to channel his ult for a uh, to uh, use his ult for a long time, however, um, he will survive through the Tom Fu onslaught if he does get caught out, which is very good. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Naga managed to push several lanes by just forcing the illusions in and using the rip side. <laughs> So it looks like despite Na'Vi's early success and the XP chart indeed showing a massive lead, 14k in the dire favour, along with a s very slight at this um, time, especially gold lead, it seems that due to Tomfu's early push, which is surprising versus a team like Na'Vi, who are normally the ones who will push in a lane and take your racks, they're on the back foot it seems, they have nowhere to farm, uh, m minimal warding by both teams, which I think is very interesting, especially for the Tomfu, who like, I assume would know better and would ward around perhaps um, this is quite obvious but well ward here maybe a secret job or the stairs here um, and perhaps ward here just to just to see where Navi's moving as they do ward in the um, Navi jungle which is well played yeah <laughs> Havos may well start saying for buyback soon five down mid for Navi every t should be two to that so I'm just pick TV right now Mu has his TP ready, and Awoke has uh, one as well, and they will have to TP back. Na'Vi will take a tier 1 easily, no defense, uh, tier 2 easily, no defense at all. Um, Chen building up with mana pool. Uh, I believe they could force it further. Um, they have such good team fight, if they manage to initiate properly, then it's, it's just Tong Fu's face being wrecked. Uh, like a bulldozer going over I mean, they they stand no chance, even with the Nala Siren. I'm very 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 surprised that um, Tom Fu didn't pick up the initial because it's a massive combo with the Nala Siren, and I'm I'm surprised neither team uh, prevented Tom Fu from getting it. Perhaps Tom Fu thought it might be a trap uh, in terms of they pick Nala Siren, and then I don't know that team is a big counter, and they Navi decides to go in like an Earthshaker or Windrunner. But I really think that the combo is far too good if it works to. Pass up. <coughs> AA coming off the illusions mid. Still a very tame score. Uh, Dendi farming up looks like he's going to go hex next, giving some much needed stats for time for the big survivability. Uh, Forming out. 
and Dice Heaven is now picked up Mana Boot, so he will be able to cast all his spells and all his items as needed. I see very aggressive blinking by Puppy, going for a kill on Sanctuary Solo. Light Heaven, nice vacuum blink up into the thing. Looks like Xbox might well get a kill despite the um, Ghost Setter. I believe it was a Ghost Setter. Good pick up by Tom Fu. They'll need a few more of those and some 4 stars to be able to see. You see two Ghost Scepters, 4 stars being picked up, and we're also able to blink. Diffuse all good to slow. Um, uh, Phantom testing down, but with the um, BKB, of course, that will be negated. But um, they will need things like BKBs and uh, damage negation in order to survive the PA onslaught with the Enigma lockdown. Uh, as we see, Navi again giving up a free tower, completely dendy defending a little bit, but very, very bad map awareness by Navi as they see it going down there. Uh, Chen sending back the. Um, uh, yeah, no. People, I don't know who it was just in time. But yeah, bad, bad play um, from uh, the forces. Without them, yeah, I don't think they should go in. I think they will need all their spells in order to obviously split up. Nice spell being sold, especially for low cast time from Kabu, which means it will hit immediately. Or rather, it will, will, will hit. Yes. Uh, PA, he just completely been wasted. I'm not sure what they're doing without Dendi there at all. Very, very bold play by Na'Vi, but as we see... Oh yeah, sorry. Thought uh, Havos blinked aggressively in, but... Just gets away. Just like MKB on the way, no buyback for Havos now, of course. Which um, suggests that uh, Na'Vi won't play too aggressive, although... Especially seeing as they have two, rac two racks exposed. Both creeps pushing in both lanes. And only uh, three heroes with TP's, which a mm, bit like lost. I mean, do we have any boots of travel coming out from these lads? No, not yet at all. But um, it's not a bad pickup, especially when you're able to pressure the two bases, meaning that two racks mean that Na'Vi will not be able to pressure your mid, simply because they will otherwise lose two racks to their own. And, uh, yeah, and um, being one racks down against a team with no racks is one thing, but being two racks down against a team with... Um, uh, one max down is is I think worse personally as the the stronger the creeps get the potential for mega creeps of one more axe is just far too um, great. Life home passing up the invis room, which will be picked up by her votes. Looks like he might go in a little uh, search somewhere. All camp rush end, two minutes left, um bit premature. Not sure about that, but and wasting quite a lot of farm time. Surprised Na'Vi didn't write down the time. Uh, I presume he was told now by his friends when it is spawning. Uh, or maybe he believes Tong Fu might not have written down the time, but I I highly doubt that. <laughs> Tong Fu smoked up. Might make something of it. None of the wokes um, creeps and how going off in his own. Should probably turn the radiance off if he wants to be a bit more subtle, but whatever. Farming up. Clearly they thought somebody was there hiding around. Both teams staying as five and both smoking up. Trying to find the gang. In case if whoever manages to find the pickoffs first will simply take the racks. Um Tongfu having the exposed Navi racks, but Navi having the better team fight at the moment. If they get the racks if they get the couple of pickoffs and they get the five man deaths from Tongfu then they can certainly push him with with their Conversions and have those things the charge in order to pick off um, the first racks of the game. All Narvi's waxing now, Rax is now returned up to full HP, so um, no easy opening for the back doors for Tomfu, as Life Heaven takes quite a lot of damage from the Narco Illusions. Quite tanky in their own right. And with Manta, of course, there's even more things to worry about and more Radiance AoE. A healing hand! Mm -hmm. Moo narrowly escaping it seems, despite the lockdown from Dendi. Keeping back this time, finally realising he needs to defend his base if they want to win. Uh, although Naga may well even go for the kill. Low mana though. Nice dodge from Benny. Nice heaven coming in. Aggressive rules forwards. This might be a very, very big pickup of how 
manages to die. Looks like he's going to try and suicide for the rats. Don't know about this choice, Hao, especially since he doesn't get it. Huge misplay from Tong Fu's Hao there. Um, not sure what he was trying to do. Should have just left immediately as soon as he saw the second TP. Should have realised Dendi was had the ulls and could set this up. I mean, wh why was he asleep? Uh, I, I guess he wasn't watching his mana properly. He had six one charges. Perhaps I could have saved his life there. I mean, very bad play from Hal. And Navi will take the third at Aegis. Putting the cheese on Dendi, I presume. Uh, due to the spammability of his spells, uh, 13 and 16. Um, obviously not that spammable, but compared to some of the other heroes. Maybe go on the track, of course, starting off as the support Alzheimer's, but um, with these items, you know what the hell's happening. The... Chi... The... Um, you know, yeah, yeah Chi's going fucking this good. Kabu being caught out with a silence, an uh, ult from Dendi, and will go down for ghosts. Almost nice escape from Kabu with the Stick ult, but he, he should have landed a little more um, to the top right of this, like northeast, in order to catch him on the edge of the stun. But nice try from Kabu. But still very far from position, especially with low ward coverage, and I'm quite surprised in him. If move, move with the high mobility, of course, if he gets caught out here, then that will spell terrible things to Tongfu with two of their heroes dead. I suspect no vacuum. And we'll safely TP out unless Dendi gets a nice ult. There we go. Smart play from Dendi. Oh, the chase continues. Oh, they can't see each other. Xbox can probably. Does Dendi know where they are? Oh, as you see him right there. Just missing the sides. We TP's in. Xbox ready to clean up. Massive crit. Drops the ult. Does absolutely nothing with the Agnes. Doesn't matter too much. And the hand of God saving. And I say that, <laughs> I'm very aware of what's going on and blinking force to steal it. Good, good play by Navi, very well played. Mu managed to stall long enough so that he's the only person dead at any one time. Uh, Rubik managed to respawn, which of course means a lot for Tong Fu, but still Navi will take their final out of the tower. tower is under attack. And... Um, Mighty AA defending tower bottom, banning at the light heaven TV back. They should be able to defend that he's awoken how at this point, especially with the wall being available, and how in fact we use a sleep in order to keep it back, which means that Tongfu will not have a sleep in this team fight. Kabu not having the best of non spells so like, hey, your conversion, pretty terrible. If I roast myself how here, and Kabu goes out, nice that hole from Puppy, I won't walking into that, I have no idea what he's doing. But those managed to bring floors, we'll get a few nice crits, perhaps using the cleave damage there, never mind, doesn't need to. I believe ult oh, wasted by Mu and slight lag. Kabu goes down to a little new Mu getting picked off again, silenced up, not even focusing on him, just taking out the sanction with a bit of an interesting choice, especially he hasn't dropped wards yet. As we drop, wow, big damage gap from the wards, sanction will go down, but Xbox and Denny very low, Denny may well blink out, and GG called by a woke. Very premature, I believe, in a way. Um, especially seeing as I would say they have a better potential late game carry, but I guess they're just far too far. We see them. we see 6k gold in him. We see Light from Heaven getting the Agonims now, which means he's not yeah. That's it. We see a massive clip from X, uh, her boasts. Reminiscent very much of Ferrari's um, TA play in a way. Temple Assassin play. But, um, there we go. Uh, GG, Tom Food, Navi. Navi take the series 2-0. Uh, I won't cast the first game, wasn't that good. But as we see, big team like coming out from Mali, this is sort of lineup that is uh, one of the most daring in Dota in the way that you have to land everything perfectly, otherwise nothing works. As of course I had the first uh, with the BKB to uh, rely on at first, but uh, as a last resort I should say rather, but um, his his farm was not good from the start and it was a close thing. Tong Fu, if they got another better farm than if they if they managed to get more team fight to synergize with this Nava, I feel they could have won easily as we see AA, of course. Um, not there. Uh, I'll just wait for the end game, end game scream. If we look at the XP difference, it's always been Navi leading. Gold, big shift, but ultimately, um, the couple of team fights, no rush, and the several, the three, the triple rush from Navi. Perhaps, perhaps due to a dive after I like to think they have a better rush than the back, etc. A couple of blinks. Uh, better than the one on top two. They. Um, they managed to add the gold bar to significantly. They managed to out farm Chinese Hao. Um, well done, both teams. Very well played. Uh, of course, Navi, strong as ever. 
um, with their interesting lineup. T uh, Phantoms has some proven here to be quite the um, capable carry, uh, if need be, especially with the cleave and the big ults, perhaps a tide or a name with a lot of that. So, you know, don't lose hope, PA fans. It is a, um, I say legitimate, it is a fringe um, professional pick. So, you know, feel free to jump on the mad mic and play it in all your pub games and yeah, whatever. Uh, bye bye. This is goodbye from me. Um, I'll be back soon enough with another commentary. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, see you around. Bye.